Hi there and welcome back. I promised you in the previous video that I'll show you examples of factorizing trinomials that will blow your mind at how simple factorizing trinomials actually is. What I said was that if we have an expression like this, okay, in other words, I have three terms, okay, important that the exponent, uh, there's a coefficient of one for the leading term, that's the ex uh, term with the highest exponent, his exponent in this case is an is an x squared. The next one is x to the power of one, and it may have any exponent, uh, sorry, coefficient, and then a, a term without, uh, or that's a constant term in this case. Okay. Now, when I have this format, it might be that this what whatever exponent is here, this exponent would be half of that exponent. Then I've got a trinomial. But if I have that, then what I do to factorize is I put it into two brackets, okay? I place the, the x times x to gives me, give me this x term here. If it Obviously, if it was x to the power of 6, this would be x to the power of 3 times x to the power of 3, okay? In this case, it's x squared, so actually whatever is this, this exponent would, would come in there. And then the next question is, what must I put in? What would the second term in each bracket be? And we said we find that by finding factors, factors of C. In other words, we look at C, we see what times what gives me C that adds up to B. And that's it. Those would be the two numbers that I put in here. So let's look at examples. Okay, so I'm going to look at, let's say, x squared plus uh, 3x plus 2. Good. Okay, this has that format. So I put it, it is three terms. I make two brackets x times x would give me the x squared term. Now, what times what gives me 2? And when I add it up, it gives me positive 3. What times what gives me 2? And when I add it up, I get positive 3. Well, that's quite simple. 2 and 1. 2 times 1 gives me 2. 2 plus 1 gives me 3. That was way too simple. You're going to say, okay, well, that's not difficult. There's nothing else that we can have for the factors of 2. I say, okay, let's make it, uh, what has more than one factor? Let's go for 12. Okay, and we make this one. Okay, there we go. So there's a trinomial, three terms. Uh, the exponent of this one is double the exponent of that one, and that one has no uh, x. Okay, so this means this is x times x. Okay, now what times what gives me 12? Okay, I can say 1 times 12, but 1 times 12 when I, um, I need to get negative 8. So 1 times 12 just gives me 12. So uh, that gives me 12, but 1 plus 12 gives me 13. Okay, I can try 3 times 4. 3 times 4 gives me, gets me close. When I add them together, I get 7. So I'm getting there. The next I can do is maybe 2 times 6. 2 times 6 gives me 12, and when I add them together, I get 8. But I don't want 8. I want negative 8. That's very important. So it shouldn't just be 2 times 6. It should be negative 2 times negative 6. Because negative 2 times negative 6 gives me positive 12. That's correct. And negative 2 plus negative 6 gives me negative 8. So those are the factors. A little bit more difficult, I'm sure you, you saw. Okay, let's try another one. Let's go for x squared. Uh, what else has, let's try 12 again. Okay, this time I'll make it negative 12. Uh, negative 12, and I will make this one negative x. Okay, so I've got two brackets, both with an x in the front, so that when I multiply it, I get x squared. This time, what times what gives me 12? And when I add it together, I get negative 1. Now you're going to say, well, this, it's impossible. Well, be careful. It's not just that I want 12. I want negative 12, which means that the two numbers I'm multiplying together, here, both of these were, were positive and positive, which means that the two numbers that I'm multiplying has the same sign. 
and you can see both of them have negatives as their sign. Both of these have positive as, as their sign. So that when I multiply same signs, I always get positive. So obviously these two signs, one is going to be positive and one is going to be negative, so that when I multiply it, I get negative, okay? And I need negative 12. Now again, I can go and look at what are the factors of 12. How can I write 12? It's 1 times 12. Now one of them must be negative, but even if one of them is negative, so I'm actually saying 12 minus 1, or actually 1 minus 12, because I'm trying to get a negative answer. So I'll take the smaller minus the bigger. 1 minus 12 gives me negative 11. That doesn't work. 2 times 6. 2 minus 6 gives me negative 4. I'm getting closer, but I'm not there yet. 3 times 4. Uh, 3 minus 4 gives me negative 1. So brilliant. This is positive 3 and negative 4. Now just, and, and, and one thing you can check yourself, you'll see the largest one of the two factors will always go with the negative. Okay, the largest one of the two, in this case 4, will always have the negative because when I add them together I need to get a negative answer. So the larger one must be negative. Let me do one uh, special uh, special case one and then one last one okay uh, x squared minus um, let's go for 4 x y plus 2 uh, sorry 4 plus 4 y squared is equal to. So I've got x squared minus 4xy plus 4y squared. Now one thing that I want you to notice is that this one, if I were to remove the y's, all of the y's, I'd have x squared minus 4x plus 4. That's a trinomial uh, in, in the format that we've been discussing so, so long. But in this case, we, if we remove the x's, then I've got, in this case, oh, not remove it, but let's make a uh, divide with the x's away. Then this would be uh, 1 minus y plus 4y squared. This will also be a trinomial. It's just written in the wrong way around. Okay, so th this is indeed still a trinomial. It just has an additional variable. Now, if you were to take these numbers, and, and you can go and test it yourself, if I had x plus y, um, x plus y, and I multiply it out, I get x squared plus 2xy plus y squared. Take my word for it now, but don't really go and test this. Do you notice that we get the same similar structure? We get this x squared term, we get an xy term, and then we get a y squared term. So this one is exactly the same. We do the exact same thing. There's an x here, an x here, but this time there's a y there and a y there. And we want to know what should be the coefficient for the y in both cases. Okay, so it's almost as if we're doing this one. The only difference is there's a y here at the end. Okay, so what times what gives me 4, and when I add it, I get negative 4. Well, that's simple. Ne because this is positive 4, it means the signs must be the same. Because it's negative, it means both will have to be negative numbers. Negative 2 times negative 2 will give me positive 4. Negative 2 plus negative 2 will give me negative 4. Okay, so here I see that I've got two terms that's uh, Sorry, I've got two binomials multiplying each other, and they're actually the same binomial. So when it's the same, why not just write it in this nice, fancy way, which I really like, and that's with an exponent. Cool. Let me do one more very challenging one, and I'll leave you with that. Okay, this one is really going to uh, frustrate you if you don't follow the steps. Remember what we've said before. The first thing you always do is take out a common factor. This seems like a three-term expression. There's definitely no common factor, but it seems like a three-term expression, but it is not. It looks almost three terms, but it isn't. It's, a, it's two terms. 
this is a single term because they are in a bracket and on top of that the bracket is being squared so one thing I can do is just write out these two brackets and then simplify it but that would be counterproductive because our idea is to factorize which is the opposite of simplify I don't want to multiply out brackets although sometimes that's necessary I do actually want to make brackets in this case we'll check out the second one so there's no constant so there's two two terms sorry there's no common factor in both of those this whole bracket is one factor and there's actually two of those factors and this one we can maybe write as uh, as six squared hopefully you you saw that that this is six squared so here what I have is a term that's being squared minus another term that's being squared I hope you immediately saw ah oh, that is the difference because one is positive the other one is negative of two squares there's two terms difference of two squares we remember how to do that one it's two brackets okay this one with half of its exponent in other words x squared minus 5x okay minus this one with half of its exponent so minus 6 and then again x squared minus 5x this is the first term but this time plus the other one with half of the of its exponent now if at any point I've lost you please pause right now and just make 100% sure you understand what I just did I simply did the factorizing of the difference of two squares assuming that this is a whole term on its uh, on its own okay so now what I would just want to show you is that the that this actually I have got no need for these brackets this is not negative six times this bracket it's this this whole thing that there's no more need for those brackets because it's not being squared anymore so there's no need for these two brackets okay and then what we see is that each one of these two factors are actually in themselves trinomials which means that this first trinomial can be placed into two brackets with an x and an x okay now what times what gives me negative six so one must be positive one must be negative so I can get a negative six and when I add them together I get negative five now six times one gives me six where one is positive the bigger one must be negative because this one is negative so negative six plus one gives me negative five so this is one times negative six again negative six plus one gives me negative five negative six times one gives me negative six that's for this one how about this one and, and I actually like this this is quite beautiful here I've got it, it seems to be exactly the same thing but there's a different sign here this one is a positive six this one was a negative six so the first thing I should notice is what times what gives me six obviously this is an X and that is an X because it's a normal trinomial with a, a leading coefficient of one uh, what times what gives me six and when I add it together I get five okay this time it's two and three two times three okay because the signs must be the same both must be negative because negative 2 plus negative 3 gives me negative 5 so negative 2 negative 3 and that these are all of my factors that this thing can factorize in so if I were to simplify this thing if I were to write out these two brackets and multiply them out I would get the same answer than I would if I multiply out all four of these brackets okay I'll leave um, it at this and uh, there are definitely more challenging uh, other challenging quest uh, questions but uh, I'll leave them for you to find and enjoy see